Who is that? Oh, okay, I had the first question. Uh, uh -huh. Recently, Donald Trump uh, changed the embassy to Jerusalem, which means that it's now the capital of Israel. What's your reaction on that? What, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What Donald Trump did was to activate or to enter into force yeah. a decision already taken by the United States Congress many years ago, many years ago, uh, to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Um, the previous presidents were simply postponing, postponing. Yeah. Uh, but Trump did what none, none before him did. He said, we offer now official United States recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. If Israel were to succeed in getting more countries to do what the United States has done, it would then be able to override the resolutions of the Security Council of the United Nations and of the General Assembly and present the, the, present the world with what is known as a fait accompli. We, we, we are now in charge of Jerusalem and we have international recognition of Jerusalem as our capital. We now have legal legal jurisdiction over Jerusalem. Hmm? This is important for Israel because unless she achieves this, the claim to be the holy state of Israel is hollow. <laughs> you can't be the holy state of Israel and you do not have legal control over Jerusalem. Hmm? So this is part of the sta stage by stage process through which this Israel could eventually claim to be the holy Israel of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. There are other things that Israel must do in order to claim to be holy Israel. For example, the Torah says that the uh, holy land extends from the river of Egypt, that is the river Nile, until the river Euphrates. So Israel will have to take control over all that territory, which is known as the Eastern Delta in Egypt. From the River Nile to the Red Sea is called the Eastern Delta. It is the most fertile part of Egypt. It is the part that produces all the food. Okay. Egypt, uh, Israel will have to take over this territory. Israel will also have to take the territory all the way until the river Euphrates. <coughs> For that, Israel will have to wage a big war. Oh, yes. Uh, if Israel is to claim to be the holy Israel of Nabi Dawood and Nabi Suleiman, Israel also has to rebuild what they call the temple, the temple of Solomon. But in the Quran, as that, Allah does not refer to it as a temple. In the Quran, Allah speaks of um, Four. Uh, churches, temples, synagogues, and masajid. But when Allah refers to this Fate Allah of Allah, he refers to it as Masjid. <laughs> masjid al Aqsa. Subhanallahi Asrabi Abdihi min al Masjid al Harami il al Masjid al Aqsa. I think this is perhaps the only place in the whole Quran that the name Masjid al Aqsa appears. Mm -hmm. if, mas if Israel is to claim to be the holy Israel, of Nabi Dawood and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam, Israel will have to be using what we call dinar and dirham as money. Gold coins and silver coins. Because that's what they were using in Jerusalem, in holy Israel. And every Jew knows that the money we're now using is bogus, 
it's fraudulent, it's haram, it's bogus, it's fraudulent, it's haram, and I've been saying that for 20 years now. <laughs> yes. And uh, sometimes I lose patience. You can't uh, be too angry with me. I sometimes lose patience. I sometimes become angry that I'm talking and talking and talking for 20 years now and they're not listening to me. And I'm seeing my people growing poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. Bangladesh becoming so miserably poor, Pakistan becoming so miserably poor, Egypt becoming so miserably poor, Algeria becoming so miserably poor, Morocco becoming so miserably poor, Indonesia becoming so miserably poor, all of Africa becoming so miserably poor. Shall I continue? It's happening before my eyes. Yes, I'm seeing it. And I know what is the cause of it. And I'm shouting from the mountain top. But they won't listen to me. What can I do? Israel will have to restore gold and silver coins as money. And I pray to Allah, I don't want to see that day. Because the shame and the disgrace on the Ummah of Muhammad will be too much for me. So please, please, brother, please Allah, send the angel and take me away from this world. I don't want to see that day. When Israel will start using dinar and the rum, and we're still using the bogus Pakistani rupee. <laughs> yeah. um, so all of these things Israel has to do. And what Trump did, was one step towards that eventual uh, capacity to capacity to claim we are the holy state of Israel. Uh, if we were to uh, analyze the implications of what he has done for us, not for them, then I have offered only one so far. I will have to eventually deliver a lecture in which I will have to analyze it more comprehensively, comprehensively. What I have done is to point out that Jerusalem is the most important city in the world for a Christian, as a Christian. Jerusalem is the most important city in the world for a Jew, as a Jew. And for a Muslim, in Akhir Zaman, Jerusalem is the most important city in the world. As a Muslim, in Akhir Zaman. The most important city in the world for a Muslim is Jerusalem. What then should have been done? Answer. You should have done what Nabi Muhammad did when he went to Yatrib. In the north. Now it's called Medina. He spent seven months negotiating an agreement where all the different tribes would live and share the city on the basis of mutual peace between them each other. It was called the Misak of Medina. It brought into being a plural model of a state. The unit of the state was not this individual, like in Pakistan and Britain and so on, where the individual is the unit of the state. And the individual goes and votes in election. But in Medina it was not the individual who was the unit of the state. The unit of the state was the tribe. The tribe. And uh, there was a multiplicity of tribes, some of them Jewish, some of them pagan Arabs, and some of them Muslim. And so he brought into being a plural model of a state, in which they all shared the city. And that would have been a sensible and intelligent solution to the problem of Jerusalem, that Islam 
Judaism and Christianity would have shared Jerusalem in peace on the basis of political equality and religious equality, none claiming to be superior to the other, and mutual respect for each other. You cannot be attacking my religion and live together in the same home with me. <laughs> uh, so a plural model of a city-state, a plural model of a city-state in which all three, the Muslims, the Christians and the Jews, would have shared Jerusalem peacefully. And I pointed out that while the Ottoman Empire did many things that was wrong, they did this right. They held Jerusalem for a few hundred years. And for a few hundred years on the Ottoman rule, the Jews, the Christians and the, and the Muslims shared Jerusalem peacefully. This was the achievement of the Ottoman Empire. What the United States has now done is to deliver the city to one group the Jews, and leave the Muslims out, and leave the Christians out. What will be the implication? There are some Christians who object to what he did, object to Christianity being left out. As soon as Trump made his declaration, the head of the Egyptian Coptic Church cancelled an appointment with the Vice President of the United States, slapping him on his face. Yeah, that's how the Orthodox Christians feel about what Trump did. So there are some Christians who object to what Trump has did. And there are other Christians, I call them people who follow Santa Claus and they support Trump. There are some Muslims who secretly are supporting Trump. But the overwhelming majority of Muslims around the world object to what he's done. Overwhelming majority. The governments, of course, are always playing both sides and sides. <coughs> so what Trump has done <coughs> is to leave that, world of, that part of the world of Christianity out and that part of the world of Islam out in the cold. <coughs> what will be the implications? Answer. The implication is that by what, because of what you have done, it is now more likely that there will be a reconciliation between Orthodox Christians and Muslims, and there will be friendship between us and eventually an alliance, and Jerusalem will bring us together. That is my first analysis of the subject. And of course, the Zionists are going to bite their fingers in frustration because this is something they don't want at all. They do not want the world of Islam and the world of Orthodox Christianity to ever come together in friendship and alliance. Kabhini! <laughs> and now because of Trump, this is going to become more likely. This is my answer to you. Mm. Can I have a glass of water, please? Jazakallah, mm -hmm. <coughs> thank you. Any more questions? Will Pakistan's existence and military and nuclear power survive? Will Pakistan survive? And will Pakistan's nuclear deterrent power survive? Do the military also? Uh, uh, a man travel all through the day, and at the end of the day he raised his hands and he prayed to Allah, Lord, Lord, Lord. Allah said, how can I answer him? When in his stomach there is haram. 
How can I answer him? We pocket this haram. <laughs> How can I answer him? Pakistan has betrayed Allah and his messenger from day one. Not the people of Pakistan. The rulers of Pakistan. From day one they have betrayed Allah and his messenger. Okay? Uh, I'm going to say some things now which uh, may hurt the feelings of some Pakistanis. Um, but if what I say is the truth, it must be spoken without regard for consequences. Otherwise I should go and drive a taxi. <laughs> When the British were leaving India, when the writing was on the wall, the Muslims had risen up and they established what is known as the Khilafat movement. What was the Urdu for it? Khilafat movement. In Urdu? Movement in Urdu. Khilafat. It was led by men like Maulana Muhammad Ali Jawhar, his brother, his elder brother Maulana Shukrat Ali, Shuaib Qurayshi, Mufti Kifayatullah, Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi, and so on. And these were men in whom the Indian Muslims had confidence, particularly Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi. They had confidence in them. And these men declared that when we get rid of the British, we have to bring back to India our model of a state and a political system. That model is called by the name a Khilafah state. Why? Because of the Quran. Because in the Quran Allah says, Ba'adawuzi billahi min shaitanir rajim. He spoke to the angels and he said, Inni ja'ilun fil abdi khalifa. So he has the name Khilafah. <coughs> I'm going to place on earth one who will rule on earth, who will govern who will establish law. Mm. Then again Allah spoke in the Quran and now he speaks to Dawood Islam. And he says, Ya Dawood, O David Islam, Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil We are appointing you as Khalifa to one, one who will rule and govern on earth and establish law. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went on to explain how you must establish government and rule. What is the state that I want you to establish? He said, Fakum bain al nasi bil haq, bil haq, with al haq. <laughs> al haq doesn't come from Washington, al haq doesn't come from Britain. Al Haq doesn't come from Western, modern Western civilization, and Iqbal should have known that. Sometimes I have to raise my voice because of the pain inside of me. Such a learned and distinguished, and ah, what, what great, how great was he as a scholar. Well, how come you didn't know that, Iqbal? He's my teacher. And I respect him and I love him. But if you make a mistake, I have to say you made a mistake. Because regardless of consequences, Allah wants you to establish rule and governance and law on earth and a model of state that will establish rule on the basis of al haq and al haq does not come from Cambridge University and Oxford University and Lincoln's Inn, where Muhammad Ali Jinnah studied and Iqbal studied. al haq comes from Allah. It comes in the Quran to us. 
And Nabi Dawood al-Islam is given this obligation to establish that state on the basis of al -Hum. This is called a Khilafah state. You don't need any big books. No, this is a Khilafah state. A state which is established on the basis of al -Hum. And al -Hum has come from Allah. And the Khilafat movement wanted that. <laughs> That's what they wanted. They wanted to remain faithful to their own indigenous political culture, their own indigenous model of a state. That's what they wanted. What belonged to their civilization, not what belonged to another civilization. Yes, the Khilafah movement made a mistake in recognizing the Ottoman Khilafah as a valid Khilafah. The Ottoman Khilafah was valid only in the shell, the outer shell. But inside, no, <laughs> it was a monarchy and it was an oppressor. Yeah. When Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi saw what the Muslims had done, and saw how the Khilafat movement spread like wildfire all over India. There's never been a movement that is as powerful in India as the Khilafat movement. Nobody knows it today. They don't study this anymore. Khilafat movement was a powerful movement in India. And it, it provoked respect from the Hindus. It spread like wildfire. And Gandhi then realized, but I want the same thing that they want. They want the British out, and they want to preserve their culture, their civilization, their model of a state. And I want the British out, and I want to preserve for the Hindus exactly the same thing. <laughs> so Gandhi said, well, if I want what they want, we should come together. So Gandhi then approached Maulana Abdul Bari. Abdul Bari was the supreme alim in the Khilafat movement. Uh, Muhammad Ali Jawahar, well, these were younger people. And uh, said to him, I, I want to make an alliance with you. I have only one condition. So Maulana Abdul Bari asked, what is the condition? He said, I don't want you to kill the cow. He said, okay, we won't, we won't have killing of the cow. Problem solved. <laughs> And an alliance was formed. The only thing I would have done differently, I would have said to Gandhi, but you don't have to ask me to do that. As a sensible and intelligent Muslim, if I'm living in your land, and you worship the cow, and you are going to be very, very displeased and hurt if I kill the cow, out of respect for your religious feelings, I will voluntarily stop killing the cow. Five rupees worth of wisdom and intelligence, that's all. So you don't have to ask this as a condition. That's what I was told Gandhi. And so the alliance came into being. And the Hindu-Muslim alliance that took place, when Gandhi supported the Khilafah movement, then became the most dangerous threat to Western civilization that has ever occurred in its history. How many Pakistanis know that? How should the British respond to this, this very dangerous development in India, an alliance of Hindus and Muslims against the British? And when they, when they succeed in getting us out, the British out, they want to return to their political system. Whereas our agenda is that you must become copycats of the Western civilization. What the Western world had done was to say goodbye to Nabi Dawood and to the model of a state that is known as the Khilafah state. And with the French Revolution, Western civilization now gave to the world exactly the opposite of the model of a state. They call it a republican state. 
And in a Republican state, Allah is no longer sovereign. The state is now sovereign. Allah's law is no longer the supreme law. No. The National Assembly makes the supreme law. The Parliament makes the supreme law. <laughs> I can go on much more on the subject. So this is this this is the reason why the British went into India in the first place. They didn't go to India just to rob us of our wealth. They went to India because India was the most important part of the whole world for them to colonize and to introduce that India into their model of a state and monetary system, etc. And then take a leave. So now the question is, what to do about the Khilafat movement? How can we get rid of this? How can we defeat this? Hmm? What they did was to create a champion in Mustafa Kamal. They did it. <laughs> and they had, to have, they had to suffer the loss. I don't know how many thousands of British soldiers had to lose their lives for Mustafa Kamal to become the hero of all heroes. But this history will never be written. Gallipoli will never be written. The Turks will never allow it. They worship Mustafa Kemal. And uh, use Mustafa Kemal and the young Turks who had already taken over government from the Ottoman Sultan in what year? See? 15. You don't know your history. 15. You, huh? 1908. 1908. They took over. It was called a coup d'etat. <laughs> Take over the government. Sultan Abdul Hamid had remained Sultan for something like 35 years. And they took over from him and they shipped him out. And now these are godless young Turks, nationalists, ruling from.